saving it. By the time I was 25, I had like 2 million in the bank just looking at it. On savings. On savings, doing nothing. Just looking at it. Saving for a rainy day. Nonsense. I wish I had a goal. But now I'd have homes, three Airbnbs. Ivy Part 6. On CT, we've got the Playhouse, which is what you're watching. We've got CIS class in session. That's where the guest who's already been on the Playhouse comes back and for two hours, they talk about a certain topic where they're an authority. You've just given us a class in session right here. Ah, oh my God. That is so, it's been, it's been such nuggets of such value, high value through your life experience that people can take and begin applying into their lives to prevent them making some certain mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's one of the, the, my biggest motivators for doing this CTA. So you didn't have to, and I'll keep thanking you because you've come here, you've been vulnerable with your life's journey to give value so that these guys here watching can, can benefit. Okay. Let's go on with the story. Good, where was I? L uh, Yellow Moon. Mm. Um, so now you've discovered this thing, now you've changed, your, your, you start the journey of change, but you're working. Yeah, I start the journey of change. Um, when you change jobs, do you, do you, does your salary increase? Yes, standard. Okay. Uh, let so, me not say standard. Sometimes it's not about increasing salary, sometimes other things come to play. But when I changed jobs, I was intent on having my salary increase. That's what by I the time you are, have, have you passed 100k? By the time... At Yellow Moon? Yeah. So... There were some tussles I was having, not tussles. I I I I demanded more from Yellow Moon, and my figure at the time was a hundred k. I don't know, and I remember my boss always saying, "Why are you so obsessed with this figure?" And I was like, "Why can't you just give it to me?" What I wanted was a hundred Gs. Eventually, when I was about to be pushed elsewhere, um, and I tell them, "Me, I'm leaving." They give me my hundred Gs. He takes me somewhere for lunch. You know how these jobs go. He takes me somewhere for lunch. I'm like, "Ah," he's like, "Wait, this is what we're gonna do." Give you this money, help you buy your car, whatever. I'm like, sour. Exactly three months later, I was poached to jail. Out. You are poached? <laughs> I was poached. So you're given the... You're given I was the given the 100, so it set me up to position myself for the next agency, and I left. So let me, <laughs> let me ask this. I always hear people say that when somebody comes to poach you and the company that you're working in offers you more money, just leave. Yeah. Uh, did it change in that three months? Did you did did their relationship change with you because you wanted to leave? No, but they didn't know within those three months I was leaving. Um, they 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 came to find out late. Like me, I did my one month. So before before the getting my hundred k finally is mm. when they knew that I had intentions to leave. Uh huh. So I stayed on for another maybe three months. It wasn't much. Yeah. And then I left. To How old are you at this time? Wow. I think 24, 23, 24, maybe. Are you, have you moved out of home? Yeah, I remember I'm living with that unmentionable. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I've moved out of home. I think at the time uh, when I've been pushed to jail, I moved from, we used to live. It sounds like pushed, pushed to jail. Jail. C-H-E-I-L, jail means number one in Korean, and it was the official marketing arm of Samsung. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Was it, a, was it a local company? No, it's a Korean. It's a Korean-owned company. So the reason I got that job, I'll never forget, I was, while I was in Yellow Moon, I used to do marketing for Samsung. Mm. I was the client service um, manager for that particular account. Leaving Samsung, the offices were at West End Towers. I think they just moved there to a new building where they are West End Towers. I see an HR guy, and that HR guy is actually Shiko's dad. Shiko's dad had started his own recruitment company. Mm. So I meet him in the halls. I'm like, Mr. Amai. Hi, what are you doing here? Not this one. Not this guy, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Amai, what are you doing here? He's like, um, I'm here for my new client, Chael. I'm just here to recruit some people. What are you doing here? I told him, I've just come from meeting my Samsung guys. Uh, we are planning some events with them. You work with Samsung? I'm like, I work with Yellow Moon, but Samsung is my account. I need you to meet someone. And he walks me to the office of uh, uh, where Chael was setting up. Introduces me to the MD, Mr. Ken Choi, one of the best bosses I've ever had in my life. That man taught me a lot. Um, uh, Ivy, meet Ken Choi. Ken Choi, meet Ivy. Ivy does events for Samsung. Oh, do you want a job? I was like, yeah. Okay. And then the rest was history. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I 
got hired into jail. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't check my paper. Nothing. The only thing was uh, they asked for evidence of my pay slip because they, they were like, how is she getting this amount of money? But no, not knowing that I had just yeah. got an, <laughs> that pay bump. Yeah. So I sent them evidence of the, of the salary and I got the job. I was the official events and consumer electronics uh, account manager <laughs> in Chale. And Chale operated very differently. Chale was an agency that hired agencies. Mm, so, so I, I became a client. <laughs> so I was hiring Kina Yellow Moon back here and there. <laughs> <laughs> so so wait, cool. did they bump up your salary? Of course. Can I ask where, where you go to? There's a time I'll stop asking. But this is, at least by the time you get to 30, not even 30, by the time you, you know, get to... still exists today. So people will be like, this is, I'm here earning two, two bob and Ivy was earning, because I was at, I, um, I think I was at 150. Mm. Yeah, 140 or 150. This is before you're 25? Yeah. Okay, what are you and doing? And earning in dollars. When Chael started, it was dollar. So that's that was the first time I opened a dollar account. What yeah. are you doing with this money? Saving it. By the time I was 25, I had like 2 million in the bank just looking at it. On savings? On savings, doing nothing. Just looking at it, saving for a rainy day. Nonsense. I wish I had a goal. By now, I'd have homes, three Airbnbs. Because then money disappeared. Imagine. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Biggest lesson. Mm, a year, two years in jail. You've been paid in dollars. Ah, just put it there. I remember I was a hoarder, so I used to peep at the account and call myself a millionaire. <sighs> what nonsense. <laughs> what a nonsense. It's like a two million. <laughs> <laughs> in a savings account. In a savings account. Ah, in yeah. the bank. Ah, yeah, simple yeah, yeah, yeah. interest. Ah, yes. Like four percent simple interest. And they're not calling you tell you anything. I them they're happy. Why is a bank calling you? Exactly. Same, you call the bank. Hmm. You ask what the bank can do for you. I didn't know. So I had a procedure to circles. I had a ton of insurance, education policy, what boy. Nonsense, nonsense. Have you bought your own car this time? Yeah. Because in Yellow Moon, I'll never forget, there was a time we left the office late and I took a job to, I was taking a job to Tao. At around, over there at the mall, cops stopped the job and we were forced to walk to town. I told myself, that's the last time I'm doing that. And remember, part of my uh, package when I went, when they kept me for the, with the 100K was, I told them, buy me a car. Mm. I'll pay you back at no interest. That was the best deal I ever got. So my sister was selling her car at the time. Yeah, we again. I'm like, Yellow will buy this car for me. They bought it for me and I paid them back. <laughs> I just said, I'll never work again. I was like, I was like, I'm too cute. I'm too cute for this. I'm too cute. <laughs> Seriously, that's, I was like, I, what am I doing? But I agree. <laughs> like, uh, I'm making money. I'm making 100K. Then I'm, I'm like, Z, uh, I couldn't do that again. Uh. At that time, I'd even been bored in town. I was like, I'm too cute. <laughs> so maybe I bought a car. <laughs> okay, let me ask this. What, tell, what, what's, what does work look like? What's your, what's your boss? Now you're working with a foreigner. Now I'm working with foreigners. Just Koreans. Ex ex what's, what, yeah, what's, what's, what's the character development in this stage? It's what's a, it like working oh, with a different... Yeah. It's very hierarchical, if that's a word. The mm. hierarchy mm. is incredible. They respect their boss literally to death and that means respecting the MD of Samsung literally to death so they are very clear about that one of my favorite books outliers really demonstrates the hierarchy in how Korea works mm. very very well the story for the Korean Airlines how at some point they used to have the most accidents because the assistant could not tell the captain that something was going on yep, uh, so that's yep. exactly how it was. But really. were you like that to your boss? I've always literally just been myself. Yes. I've always just been myself. I wasn't like that. But my boss, my boss inspired respect. He didn't demand it. Ken Choi was one of them. He was a different Korean breed. And when he had, and he had been given the honor of starting the Kenya office because he had won best jail employee globally the year before, and he was given a check of $10,000. Mm -mm. Here, you're such a good employee, take this, and then go start a company in Kenya. Ken Choi was brilliant. And at the time, I think he was 31. And he was the MD of this agency. What's he teaching you? Or what are you learning from him? Ken Choi always took the fall for us. 
Mm. If I'm in trouble, if someone else is in trouble, he'd be like, I take accountability. And he would defend his people to the core. When he comes back downstairs, he will teach you and tell you this is not what you should have done. You should have done this. He will teach you. He well, will he not teach you. for you. He will not scold you. If you were yellow moon, would scold you, but he would come and teach you and say you're missing strategy. Try and do this thing this way, think this way. But up there, he's taken all the heat for you. He's taken it all. Wow. And wow, I saw wow, this wow, firsthand. Wow, 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 wow. I was like, mm -mm, my people are good. We will change. It's fine. But my people are good. He would absorb that shock. And then come back and teach you how to do it right. So I, I had never seen any boss doing that. Usually, you're thrown under the bus. Hmm? I tell you, there was never a bus with Mr. Ken Choi. He took, he shielded us from that, from that shock. And then came back to teach us how it's done. Ken Choi was great at building relationships. Every day after work, if not every day, every weekend, da, 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 he was busy building relationships with the client. The retainer fees we would get were not... We did not get those retainer fees because Ken Joy did work in the office. It's because of what he did after hours. So that's when I realized when you want to get money from a client, ask them for lunch. Mm. Take them for dinner. Not to ask for funny, funny things, because the thing with marketing is such a weird, promiscuous industry. Mm. Not for funny, funny things. To build a relationship with them as a person and not them as a client. Yep. Yep. So Richard, you have children. How are they? Richard, you like golfing. Wow. Where do you golf? Richard, you like eating this type of food? I didn't know. And Asians are very big on sharing meals and people and peopling and mm. that type of thing. So mm. Ken Choi also really, really, really taught me that. He also had boundaries. He knew that he knew that because he was nice, he could be pushed a bit. But when Ken Choi was done, he was done. Um, if he tells you this is the final say, it's the final say. Ken Choi also really listened. Because if the person is frustrated working in that particular office, he was so intuitive, he could tell. At the time I was smoking, I was a freaking sm chain smoker because I thought it was cool acceptance, whatever, in the office. At the time I think he noticed I was smoking too much and he asked me what's up. I told him I'm struggling. I won't say why because mm, I don't want problems. But uh, for him to sense that I was struggling and he noticed I was smoking more than I should be, or no one should be smoking, but, and to come and ask me what's up, it's that humanity I told you I was lucky in Yulomun. Mm. So you might think the guy is busy, but he's still observing and he still cared. So those are the lessons I can take from, from Ken Choi. Mm. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. When Ken Choi resigned from jail, I resigned as well. I think I said it was time for me to go. I literally stayed at that job for that man. What? He was one of the best bosses I have ever had. I hope he sees this. Oh, he will. I was like, Pff. Ken Choi changed my life. Oh, I also won best employee the first year in Chile. <laughs> I was given an S5. Yeah. yeah, best employee, I was given an S5. Oh. Mm. And it was the MD's choice. And it's because he said he had seen me at an event. He told me, Ivy, you know you're not the agency. Now you hire agencies. But he saw me at an event and I was putting banners up. I was briefing people. He saw me exact myself. Mm. And that's my nature. So he was like, yeah, good job. Yeah. So just for context so that people can understand, Samsung has this agency. Basically, Samsung is trying to get its products into the market. Yeah. Uh, so, at this, you are no longer Yellow Moon who's doing the eventing. Mm -hmm. You are hiring Yellow Moon to yes. do the eventing. Yes. Yes. You're giving them, you're the one who's giving the briefs. Yes. Over and above. So, handling events and handling creative for consumer electronics, which is their washing machines, their fridges, their TVs. The job I basically got when I started influencing. I, mm -hmm. I was there in the back doing the creatives and understanding those things, which is what set me up to get into influencing, basically. <laughs> Ooh, what about your colleagues? Are you changing? Are you, are you more friendly to work with now this time? Are you... A little bit more, but I remember one particular lady, she's called Patricia Molel, told me, you, 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 you expect us to do your work so quickly out of nowhere and you don't do the same for us. So she completely changed me also. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, I started just becoming more calm and understanding timelines and managing my client. So if a client wants posters printed by Monday, you tell the client it's not possible. It'll happen on Wednesday. Or, no, it'll happen by Friday. Mm. Knowing very well that production has promised you Wednesday. So that's where I learned how to delight a client. Mm. I would never say, yes, it's coming out on Wednesday because if it doesn't, yep. you've cocked up. Mm. But if you say Friday, it comes on Wednesday, you're a star. Yep. Yeah. 
Patricia taught me that. She said, you can't demand for us to do work quickly. Because it may move quick. But that's not how work goes. So that's when I learned to manage clients' expectations. And even me, if you work with me now, like even my suppliers, I tell them, when will this be ready? Uh, it'll be ready by Monday. I'll say, I'll give you till Tuesday. Sour? Sour. And if there's an issue, let me know. Mm. Let mm. me know. Because I also have clients. Yep. Let me know. Communication is so key. And sometimes I don't understand how in communication agencies, people don't communicate. You're literally in the business of communication, <laughs> but you're not communicating. Yeah. Communicate. I don't know what this fear is. I don't know. So maybe that's where I learned that. Thank you, Patricia Molel. I want to ask this. And again, I have a rule on this platform. You don't have to answer what you don't want to answer. Yeah. But I'm aware that your life is not just work. Yeah. I know on CTA we spend a lot of time, especially in the Kenyan society, because yeah. as guys are, we're hustlers, we're grinders, we are, we are go-getters. Mm. So hence a lot of the conversation. And even, let me be honest, work is a big part of your timeline. You spend mm. more time in work than you do sometimes with family, mm. than you do with family. Mm. But if this is who you are in the workplace, I'm, I'm very aware this is not a switch that is switched on. Mm. If you're constantly acting like this, this is who you then become. Mm. So what does this look like in a relationship? Mm. You get, mm. as a sibling, as a girlfriend, as mm. a, like. Mm. That's a good question. That's a good question. Um, you have to ask my siblings. So there's a period and I believe that particular period when I was in a particular relationship where I was just really just not myself and I was, I was actually more abrasive, I think. And that's because the relationship side was not doing very well. Mm. So I needed to, not I needed to, I was projecting a lot of crap. And I remember the time we had a conversation with my small sister and I disrespected my mom. I was acting out and disrespected my mom. And she asked me, why are you so angry? Mm. Why are you so angry? So yeah, there was, my personal life was not doing very well. Okay. So it was, I was projecting outward at work, towards family, towards whatever, because of a certain relationship that I was in that was not doing very well for me. Okay, yeah. okay. So, so that's, that's the explanation I can give for that. No problem. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to find out ways, because I'm hearing your story, and, yeah. and I'm like, you've got amazing parents, you've yeah. got all of these things. Yeah. So where is this? person, bad person, lack yeah. of a better word, yeah. coming from. Yeah. But I'm understanding there's this there's this side that you don't want to get into, which I completely respect. Yeah. That was then leading to you be projecting that person out at work and other places. Yeah. Okay, let's continue. Yeah. So your bo you 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 switch. Your boss leaves after how many years? Oh no. He was there for a while. Okay. Yeah. So you are this time. Is there, is there anything else that you want to talk about in this period of work? In this period of work for chill events. Do you get pay rise? Da, 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 da. I believe I got a pay rise once in chill. We also had Did you ask great for it? bonuses. No, I think that one. I think that one. My work spoke for it. Okay. Versus, and also policy. Ah. Yeah, there was also policy. We were working in a place that policies actually worked. It wasn't a kitchen. <sighs> Such a brilliant question. Yeah from that I've got off the basis of that. Yeah. What is it like working with, with, a, with that you think maybe we can learn? Mm. I'm trying to ask this from a positive yeah. approach. I'm yeah. learning as well, Ivy. Yeah, <laughs> good. Just, Very good. What crap are the Kenyans doing? But rather ask, yeah. <laughs> what, what can we learn from, from the outside? As much as they can also learn from us, mm. and they've got a lot that they can learn from mm. us, mm. What, what, are the, what are the takeaways that you could say, hmm, I took this to go. Mm, mm. 